Oh, good morning, everybody. So, uh, this video is gonna be a little bit of a ride, I think. And it's probably gonna sound like I'm trying to do some damage control, but I'm gonna ask that you try to hear me out. Secondarily, uh, as is the typical format of most of my videos, I tend to wing it. So my, I guess, speech might be a little bit more broken up. Um, I'm gonna trip over my words. It's kind of just how things go. I apologize in advance. Anyway, yesterday, uh, Linus and Luke did the WAN Show podcast to talk about how the GOAT video kind of demolished everything related to Tarkov and how the community completely melted down and the Reddit melted down and everything else. But there was one portion of the podcast that I feel as though needed to be, I guess, addressed. Because Linus is under the assumption that content creators are being given kits, gear stuff, whatever, in mail or whatever inside of Tarkov. And I want to be the first one to tell you that that doesn't really exist, but it used to, kind of. My understanding is that on a fairly regular basis, they get Get, like a lot of ammo and equipment like like they, they get these these packs or these drops that are quite valuable and that while they aren't a bribe could potentially put them in a position where they want to retain their community liaison um there, so there is in order to continue getting perks so there might be an incentive in the community to kind of sweep under the rug anything that paints Battlestate games in a negative light is that is that a, a fair understanding of the situation so this is only something that I've actually even heard about recently so Luke and Linus go on to talk about how uh, there's packages of gear being handed to content creators and to Linus's, uh, I guess, credit, there are members of people in chat that are kind of feeding this information to him by saying things like Sherpas and whatnot. Um, and Luke explains what Sherpas are and how they teach new players how to play the game, etc., etc. So I want to kind of back up a little bit. Back in the day when content creators, larger content creators, were looking to get into Tarkov, back when like Clean and the like still worked for them, uh, those content creators were given media passes. They were given kits, like an exorbitant amount of stuff to be able to experiment with different weapon builds and armor builds and run around and see what Tarkov was like when you had, like, fun guns. That has since sunset. And for the last couple of years now, anyone that at one point in time had a media kit years ago was instead given just a copy of EOD. So they weren't able to have just a ton of stuff at the very, very beginning anymore. However, there still are other ways to get additional gear at the very beginning. Uh, people, for example, that bought one of the books for Tarkov a long time ago were given a key code that they could put into their profile that would enable some extra items to be given to you in-game. But it was never anything in in excess. It was just a couple of things here and there, nothing of real value. But as Linus had mentioned in regard to the Sherpa program, there is or was still a massive incentive for the Sherpas to get an awful lot of stuff. Until very recently, maybe about a month ago, Sherpas had content creators among their ranks. And the rules for content creator Sherpas and non-content creator Sherpas were different. Now, a content creator could do normal Sherpa work stuff in a non-content creator capacity and still qualify for all of these little bonuses and incentives, but they weren't required to. In the case of a content creator Sherpa, all you had to do was dedicate a section of your stream and or uh, a video, let's say, per month to educating new players on aspects of the game. You know, interesting weapon builds or uh, where to get a certain task done quickly, What you name it. Uh, it was two videos a month or two sections of a dedicated stream a month or a combination of those two things in order to retain your content creator Sherpa status. That was the only requirement, the minimum and maximum requirement. There were no other requirements. In the case of a normal Sherpa, a non-content creator, Sherpa, what they were required to do was a dozen raids sessions with a brand new player. If they did a dozen sessions with a brand new player, they got like the big kit along with the content creator Sherpas that did their minimums, and they were given a ton of meds, uh, golden stars, Vaseline, uh, large and small surgical kits, and like a thousand rounds of high pen ammunition, M61, M993, 9x39 BP, 7.62x39 BP, uh, M995, you name it, there was a ton of high pen ammo available to everyone. The kits varied from month to month by a small amount, but they were given a large amount of stuff. 
This was something that I mentioned in a video that I did uh, maybe a week, week or two ago, uh, where we were talking about people being boosted. And this was something that I used as an example of BSG doing its own boosting for its own people. Now, as is my understanding, people inside of the Sherpa program that have to do these dozen sessions a month still end up getting these kits. But content creators are no longer a part of the Sherpa program. So at least in this case, they're not being like incentivized to dissent on GOAT's video. On the emissary side of things, which are people that act as liaisons between the community and Battlestate Games, my understanding is that emissaries are given one package of stuff every year as a birthday present. Just something for them to say, happy birthday, here's some cool stuff. It shouldn't really be that big of a deal. In most cases, content creator emissaries like Walker and Dan Exert and Iron Fist, I don't think are necessarily being influenced by this, but I think on a larger scale, people that are being denoted as emissaries, as liaisons between the community and Battlestate Games would potentially have some amount of an incentive just for the title to say that the cheating video, let's say in this case, was not as bad as people would paint it to be. I'm not saying that's the case for the content creators among those ranks. However, um, for other people, it very well could be. I don't know. I can't really speak to the effect of each and every one of them. I can personally say from the, I guess, content creators that I know in this space that are working as emissaries, that I've seen them be the voice of dissent on many different occasions. So I don't think at least in those specific cases that this is necessarily a thing for them. But I can absolutely see the argument that would be made here because I think that people would just want to retain the title. But there are other incentives that don't have anything to do with gear. For instance, Walker has a spray painted logo. His, his logo is spray painted on walls inside of Tarkov. The Sherpas that are involved in the Sherpa program also have their names listed as rogues. So if you kill a rogue and you see a name that you hadn't recognized at one point in time, it's probably a Sherpa. There was also a rumor floating around that the Sherpa program was going to be given armbands. Each and every one of the Sherpas was going to have one personalized, like with their name on it. So that's an incentive in and of itself. If I was still a content creator and I wanted to make sure that I stayed in the game, which I was a rogue at one point in time, if you ever killed a guy named One Leg, apparently that was me, I'm no longer in there because I'm not a Sherpa anymore. So when they removed me from the Sherpa program, they took that away. But you could bet your boots, if I thought that I would be able to retain that status, I'd probably be more liable to toe the line because I'd want to stay as part of canon inside of the game. All of this being said, I just want to kind of bring this around full circle to say that there aren't really any incentives for content creators to be giving their opinion in dissent of what the general community thinks as a result of, of BSG doing something for us. And then, of course, the elephant in the room is drops streams. However, there are several examples of people that are on the list for drop streams that either don't play Tarkov, um, think that Tarkov is a joke, uh, haven't touched Tarkov in two or three years, make videos condemning Tarkov to the ends of the earth, and yet they are still on the list to be able to participate in drops. So I don't think that that is a solid enough example. Although, again, it may incentivize certain content creators that don't want to rock the boat to try and stay towing the line in order to make sure that they retain their drop stream status. I can tell you that I'm personally not one of them because I've said a ton of crap in the past and I'm still on the list, so who knows? That being said, I don't think that content creators are necessarily the enemy here. The criticisms that I made about GOAT's video, the criticisms that Veritas made about GOAT's video, and the criticisms that other guys like Axel and Arachne had made about GOAT's video, aside from the embellishing that goes on in those videos, I think is still valid criticism. In fact, GOAT agrees with that criticism. Uh, GOAT, Veritas, and I are working on a piece of content right now that hopefully will be done by the end of next week. It's taking some time, unfortunately, and I don't really want to let on because I don't think that that's fair to the other guys because we're all trying to work on this thing at the same time. But if the guy that made the video agrees with the criticisms surrounding the video, I don't see the anger associated with people saying that content creators disagreeing with certain aspects of the video is a problem. You're being angry for someone else that isn't angry about it. I'm just saying. Suffice to say, though, that general content creators that are not a part of any of these programs are not involved with any type of kickback program or anything that exists or has ever existed for BSG. Only the largest of the large content creators were ever given any type of a media kit. And all of those media kits have now sundowned into just general EOD kits that we all get on day one the same as everybody else anyway guys that's what i have for this one thanks so much for coming and checking it out as always i will be live as soon as this video is live please come
come follow me over at twitch.tv slash one peg where i stream every day from 7 to 8 a.m eastern standard time uh i'm going to have drops enabled tomorrow starting at noon for a twitch rivals competition in destiny 2 where we're going to compete for a world first uh for the new raid instance that releases at noon tomorrow consider following me over on my socials at one peg mg on twitter and as always if you would consider subbing the channel here i would very much appreciate it thank you so much for all of your time and i will see you in the next one peace